So today we are talking with Georg Pongratz, who is researcher at Ericsson Research. So welcome. Hi. Um, very nice to meet you again. And uh, today we are talking about data plane programmability and P4 and what kind of use cases you experience and you try to, s what problems you encounter and what you try to solve. Uh, so what gets you up? What gets your research question boiling? Yeah, basically the answer is simplicity. So, you know, when we were talking about uh, the telco industries for, for years, for in the past, you know, people had the feeling that, you know, we are producing very complex equipment, usually, you know, hardware equipment that is, uh, you know, not easy to manage and, uh, and of course, requires a lot of uh, special knowledge and, and uh, you know, special expertise uh, to use. And this, this era is over, so, and, uh, and it's over also for us, for the telco industry, because everybody is, you know, wants to have systems that are easy to manage, easy to upgrade, and, uh, and whenever you have a new idea, it's easy to, to put into practice. So that's actually, uh, that was valid for the compute industry uh, with these big data centers and, uh, and you know, these big players like, uh, like you know, Google or Facebook, Amazon. But uh, this, is, this is valid also in our industry and not just in the control plane, which is usually the more complex stuff, but also in the data plane. So the network itself should not be a limit. Uh, you should make everything possible what you can imagine. So the, so, so the network itself should not be the limitation. And that's why programmability is a key question for us now. Well, there is this kind of trade-off between like how flexible and, and complex you can make things and, and how this programmability help, help in that. And um, so how do you see this, this, this trade-off? Well, I think the trade-off is usually uh, that people tend to think that, uh, that when we are talking about more programmability and more flexibility, uh, we are usually talking about less performance at the same time. And, uh, you know, the, the big question is, uh, is, it, is, it a, is it true or is it just a, just a false assumption? And I think what we can, what we can try to research these days and what we, what we try to study is basically this, this question. And, and all of these topics are, that we are doing today is around this question, whether the, the, the bigger flexibility and the bigger programmability uh, is against performance or, or you know, is there any problem with this or not? And I believe there is, there is not really a, this isn't a real problem. This is, this is a false assumption. And of course, it's a, uh, if you are more flexible and, and your system is more capable in terms of functionality, you always have to pay some price, but, but this should not be a, a huge price. Right, and so how how this this P4 helps then in in the in the performance and the flexibility and and uh, with this new kind of hardware that we are also seeing being deployed and and being available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually the uh, yeah we can we can talk about the applications. So so basically uh, in in this era the the network functions will become applications basically. In, uh, which would run in software. And, uh, and basically, if you are a software developer, uh, in order to have high performance, you have to take care of the, of the underlying hardware you are running on. If you, if you are talking about uh, the, the normal way of developing software, for example, in C++ or, or Java, uh, you have to understand basically the system you are working on, the, the SDK, uh, the hardware you are using, you know, what is the cache structure on Intel, Etc. Etc. <coughs> and um, and usually the as an application developer you don't want to deal with this complexity. You want to deal with the logic of your application and and how you want to implement your functionality. And basically that's that's the good thing in in uh, in P4 and and in more general uh, these domain specific languages that uh, that basically the application developer develops his functionality in this uh, in this language. And he's limited to somewhat, somewhat to, to this domain, and the the rest of the of the work is basically done by experts of the other domain, like uh, experts of the compilers and experts of the hardware. And actually, that will be put this this uh, kind of knowledge will be put in the back end, 
and uh, the application developer don't need to care about the backend. So basically, uh, we can say that that uh, this kind of this this split of the domains is a good thing because everybody can master his domain only, and in that case, the performance will be good enough. Uh, eventually a big and, and and this guy on the application level don't need to take care so i think that is the good the good thing in p4 and that is the good way in uh, the good thing in this uh, domain specific languages i think that was a very good example with the application developer and uh, where the logic should go and and how the compiler then can mm. optimize things um how would you say are what, what would you say is the most important applications that you foresee for your company Ericsson, who is a leader in 5G technology? For us, P4 is a <coughs> so it's it's slightly um, I wouldn't say off topic because it's, it's it's definitely not. But you know we are interested. So P4 is currently more uh, hardware oriented, so this barefoot uh, chip oriented. Uh, language and is more, uh, I would say, targeting data center backends, or data center backplane and data center applications, and uh, and core network applications like uh, layer two, layer three kind of IP routing, Ethernet uh, switching applications. While for us in the 5G era, I think uh, we are more to the to the to this edge of the network, so so to the gateways and base stations are are uh, relatively low bandwidth compared to these uh, core network applications, but uh, so like these switches or routers. But we but we used to have more functionality usually. So and actually uh, in Fiji that's a really good question because you know this is this is coming, but. Uh, Currently, the only thing we know about uh, or kind of killer application in the future is that that uh, that it can it can come from many different uh, you know industries, and it and we have a lot of very different requirements, but we only have one network, so we have to kind of prepare our network to fulfill many different requirements. I I will make an example that, for example, uh, in a factory, uh, the robotic controllers. The, I mean, the companies who produce robotic controllers want to place their controller to a <coughs> more centralized location, and usually they want to put it also to a cloud, cloud-like environment. They are also are, are, they are also in this transformation from hardware-centric and big box approach to a more software-centric approach. So that's a good thing because we are in the same transformation, basically. Right, right. But you know, to do that, <coughs> they have to. Uh, get rid of these big boxes that are sitting near the robot arms, and they have to put these uh, functionality, software hardware functionality, to a more central location. And they have to use radio, usually, and because of that, they have extremely uh, strict latency requirements. Right, right. To to be able to control the the robot movement. On the other hand, you and and they don't really have you know high bandwidth requirements because they also they they are only like. Uh, latency sensitive and of course packet loss is not an option for them either uh, but on the other hand you know like uh, what was announced a few days ago uh, Verizon wants to buy 5G network and want to want to use it basically for replacing some of their fixed networks so uh, because it's capable of doing so yes. and actually this requires very high bandwidth on the other other hand, you know, latency is less of an issue if you want to connect households and want to, like, you know, play HD TV streams over it, and uh, you know, this type of normal uh, traditional application like online gaming or something like that. So, and we have this all of these applications on the on the 5G network. So, we have this diversity, and that's why I think we we have to have a a very you know, flexible network uh, under 5G. And that means that, uh, you know, we typically want to use the, the same kind of uh, networking language. And okay, it can be P4, but if we, use, if we want to use P4, we want to use it for describing the packet processing in the base stations. 
the packet processing probably in the switches that are running between the base station and the central uh, site. And we also want to describe the central site uh, behavior like the PDN gateway or this type of gateway behaviors or you know how, how we collect charging data, how we you know probably do some uh, differentiation between the different user flows and things like that. So there are a lot of functionality that we want to describe with this uh, language. And I started with saying that uh, P4 is a slightly off topic, which is, you know, definitely not because we are dealing with, we, we, are, we are working with it and we, we, are, we have, we see great potential in it. But uh, I think there are some elements that, that are probably needed to be added, uh, maybe, maybe later. Uh, and I think we have to kind of open it up to this edge uh, scenarios that that we are interested in and we are we are strong in but i don't see a problem here because the 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 language itself and the and the construct itself and sdk compiler whatever so what what we have it as a as an ecosystem seems to be quite capable of of uh, dealing with these type of scenarios right and when you say this comes to like programming language support and the compiler so can you briefly say a little bit about what's the difference compared to <coughs> programming in c++ or java on the one hand and say you program in in p4 or related uh, language constructs uh, on the other hand yeah i think uh, yeah we basically touched upon this uh, when we were talking about this uh, multiple domains of of uh, expertise uh, because if you let's say if you want to write your application uh, in C++ and you you want to deploy it on x86 machines for example that is very typical these days in that case basically you you and if you if it's a network heavy application so you want to process packets basically like like in a gateway scenario then basically what you have to do is you have to be a master of the application itself so you have to know your functionality and you also have to be the master of the of the underlying hardware and the underlying SDK itself. So, like, usually you you would use the PDK, of course, because that will allow you a bit higher performance. But in that, even in that case, you know, it's it's not magic, so it it will not solve any, everything. So you have to be aware also on the underlying of the underlying hardware. So what kind of x86 CPU your your system will run on? What is the cache hierarchy? Whether it's a Xeon or an Atom, uh, there are differences. And uh, and you know it's, it's better to hide this uh, underlying knowledge uh, under some SDK, like like in the P4 case. So the P4 is basically a limited language that is that that limits the programmer to to do everything. But on the other hand, it also limits to do stupid things, basically. Yes. <laughs> so yes. in C++, you don't have any limitations. So, and you know what, that, that, what does that mean? So that means that you can uh, do a lot of mistakes. You can do a lot of performance uh, problems, basically, just, just by not uh, knowing enough the underlying hardware and, and maybe the SDK you are using. And uh, it's better to have a compiler that will kind of hide away that problem for you. And of course the compiler, you, you need to have a few very good programmers to write a compiler such, such of that. Uh, and you also need uh, good programmers to, to write the backends basically that, that the compilers would use. But you know, in that case we are talking about probably three different teams where each team member or each team has to be expert of their topics. Right, And right. it's much easier to at least I believe it's much easier to have high performance or relatively high performance and uh, relatively low error ratio if we are using that kind of approach where, where we actually segment this problem to two or three different uh, spaces. So do you, do you think this is still like some kind of research experience or like what are the challenges to, to, to being deployed? And, and in a real system, in, in a real, let's say, 5G networks, what, what still need to be solved? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, one, one of, the, one of uh, the needed to be solved questions is the functionality, as I said, that uh, there are probably some missing uh, 
elements in the P4 language, like the traffic management, for example, that that I know that they just started to work on. And actually, I think this is a this is a working group where where we will also try to be active. Uh, at least some colleagues have quite good ideas what to do. Uh, I think that is a missing piece which will be solved in a quite short time. And the other missing piece is the you know the reliability of the current compilers. I would say. So currently, I think uh, the community is more focused on the on the hardware backends. So the Barefoot has a compiler for their hardware, and you know I I think that works well. I I, I didn't use that so far, but you know if it wouldn't work, then <laughs> I probably <laughs> would know about that. And uh, <clears throat> but the software targets are are much less much less mature. I would say that means that of course we have a few. Uh, like I know that uh, because because one of the groups we are working with has this DPDK backend and the DPDK based compiler, which is quite uh, quite good, but uh, but it still need to be more mature uh, and you know need to work probably a bit more with that. But of course that depends on on uh, whether a big company selects such a target because of course if Google selects it or even Ericsson selects it as a as a future kind of backend for for the products then of course we can or they can put a few guys and uh, that that can solve a lot of questions so i think yeah maturity is is something that is is not entirely there at the moment as we speak but it's coming and i think it's not a coincidence that a lot of big companies are are already part of this p4.org community right, right. so it will come and uh, it was if if you if you had asked this question two years ago when we started to work with P4, I would definitely say yeah it's it's research it's only only academia and it's only research, uh, but not today. I think it's getting more more and more adapted uh, by the industry. So Gergely, what made you end up at Ericsson Research? Can you tell us the story? Uh, what made you interested yeah, in research? <laughs> it's actually a very simple story. So basically, I I was starting at. To, to work at Ericsson as a student, so basically my 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 thesis uh, consultant was was working at Ericsson at that time, and so I I ended up you know working there for a few days, a week, and uh, and after finishing the university, I had several other uh, like uh, you know I I tried different other uh, jobs, but uh, but I actually ended up. At, at Ericsson because I think that research is actually the <laughs> the best way to to actually solve problems and it's actually I, I like this freedom that that you can define your own problems usually and and you can solve the problems so that's it basically it's it's a very simple story I I don't have any better explanation of that <laughs> a very interesting career thank you Gergely very much for coming today and for your interview <coughs> thank you <laughs>